Hi, welcome to Team Muddy Sheep Reviews. Now, I don't know whether you remember one of my old videos when I made this. What is this? It was a portable charge station. What it was, I took old 6S batteries, very large batteries that were given to me, and I converted the, this uh, box to make a portable charge station. However, the batteries have died, so... I'm in a situation now, I've got this lovely charge station or power station, but the batteries are dead and the batteries are quite expensive, so on, until uh, I get donated some new ones. Yes, the uh, beast from the east has hit us and we've got rather a lot of snow, so I'm going to spend it in the shed doing things like this, because that's what I do. Batteries are flat, batteries are knackered, they could put no more. To keep this box going, I bought one of these. This this actually is 16.7 amp, 12 volt power supply. And this was about a tenner. I'll put a link below. This is about a tenner. So basically I can put 240 volts in and 12 volts out. I'm gonna put an IEC socket on the outside so I can plug in the mains and because that power supply needs cooling I bought some 12 volt cooling fans and some nice grills so I'm going to put a power supply on the inside of the box that will be capable of running the charger I'm going to put cooling in the box and the cooling then will keep this obviously running smooth so right so what have I got inside the box well basically you can see here this is a 24 volt to 12 volt converter because the charger I had in there was a Turnergy that would only run on 12 volts uh, it wouldn't run on the 22 volts that the 6S batteries would provide so what I did I got this this is what they use in trucks and this gives a 12 volt output for auxiliary circuits can't quite remember the amperage but it was something like 10 amps, maybe 20 amps. I'll have to check. I'll put a link below. So this was a, a power adapter from 24 volts to 12 volts. This was the um, a balance board, if you like, that actually allowed me to plug in three 6S batteries. To protect these 6S batteries, I had a balance connection alarm. Um, what this did, it, it monitored the cell voltages in the 6S batteries and gave me an alarm using a conventional alarm unit for up to 6S batteries. So that was convenient. So if the batteries run too low, it would start alarming. I had a, a two pole toggle switch that switched everything. I um, used the, the pillars, the formal connector sockets. I used them as a, a junction point for the 12 volt rail. So the first thing I need to do is find out where this is going to fit. So, because I've got all this aluminium, it's a little bit of a tight fit, but basically it's going to sit in there, a replacement for where the 6S batteries go. So like I said, a lot of these, this stuff is uh, off eBay. Very simple, if you watch the build video, you'll see, see me putting all this in and what I used. A couple of two pole switches. Like I said, later I added these units, which was the USB and the 12 volt accessory socket that you find in your cars and that is it it's a lovely bit of kit and it's a shame not to use it because the batteries are, are duff so uh, this means option is uh, is something that needs to be done all right so what I've done I've just Cut the supply to the voltmeter and put it to the fan and that'll be fine. So this fan is configured so it's extracting. So it's drawing cool air in through here and extracting there. So that will be work perfectly for me. For those of you who haven't seen an EC3 or these are EC5s, haven't seen them, basically you solder the end on so you're not messing around with the plug or causing any heat damage to the plug and then you simply thread it through there and then you notice then it's, it's loose so what you do and you simply click them in 
So that's now in there, popped in. And that's it. So that's now going to go. We see there's positive and negative printed on there to make sure, but it's the flat edge is the positive. So that is going to plug in there. And then that will be my 12 volt supply from my post play. So all I got left now is the mains connection. So an IC socket there for the mains connection in the back out the way. Two air inlets and the, the fan there. Right, what I'm doing here, I've made a mains lead um, with crimps. I'm using uh, regular crimps that you'd buy from your local car accessory shop. There's various different types of crimpers, but I've got a, a ratchet crimper, which is a bit more robust and stronger. Uh, it gives a better crimp. So I'll simply put the wire on, lock it in the crimper, and squeeze it. Right, what I'm going to do before I fix it in, I'm going to test it. Check everything you've done and make sure everything's connected right. So, live neutral is going to live neutral there on the earth. Posneg is in the right place there and it's going through onto the switch. So, the switch will switch on and put power onto these terminals that feeds everything. So, I now know that everything's where it needs to be. All I need is an IEC lead. Right, power up. 11.99 volts. So th this is actually a 12 volt regulated supply. There is a pot where I can adjust. I've taken it up so it's just over 12 volts. So it's 12.08, 12 but it's actually 12 volts on my supply there. So that's perfect, happy with that. The pot that I've adjusted on on the side of the supply, there's a little potentiometer, that, that gives it about one or two volts, so you can fine tune it. I wanted it just over 12 volts, which is now what I've got. So, all I have to do is put the battery on there and start test. So this seems to be working, knock it off, knock my mains off. So it's now time to put things into place. What I think I'm going to do, I'm going to use good old fashioned Velcro. I'm going to put two Velcro pads on there, Velcro pads on there, and stick it in with Velcro. So if I need to take it out, it's not permanently stuck in. Great. I'm a bit worried about these being pinched there. So I'm going to use a little bit of spiral tube on there as well. It's only just in case that comes down and pinches the wires. And there is my super duper charger. There's only one thing to do now, give it some load. I got my batteries and I don't know whether you've seen one of these, but basically it's a, it's a product by ISDT Battery Go. And if you plug the battery in, it tells you in one screen all the cell voltages. There is also another type which is this, which a lot of people call them battery medics and battery doctors. And you can plug in and that's the same, shows you the cell voltage. These ones are cheaper and they just tell you 51% battery life in there and then you've got to go through all the individual cells check in. It's sometimes nicer to just plug in one of these and see your batteries all in one go, so you can group them together, so all the batteries of a similar voltage can then go on charge on a balance port. Don't put batteries on this, half charge, full charge. Try and keep the cell voltages um, pretty much the same, and you won't have a problem. Another feature on this is if you press, you can balance the cells. So that's now balancing the cells, and what it's doing, it's taking voltage out of the high cells and putting it in the low cells to get an even battery voltage. And so they, these are good, they're about £20, pound. they're on bang good, um, they're pretty good. Another nice feature of this, if you plug your battery in there, if you plug your battery in there, or I think you can use a cell, you can then use it as a USB charger. So you can plug your phone in there and charge your phone off there because that gives a regulated output there. So that's a handy feature as well to have. All right, so I've got four batteries on here, 1.3 amps each, 
the start. I'm going to put my meter on so I can see what the charge is doing then as well. Everything feels, feels and smells quite nice and that's holding the voltage quite comfortably. So yeah, so that's charging, no issues at all. Like I said, the power supply is capable of giving 16 and a half amps, but I've rated it for 10 amps. This, this charger goes up to eight amps. So I'm gonna give it the full amps, eight amps, and see what happens. As this go in now, six amps, starting to pull the power out of the power supply, but it's still holding, it's 11.9 volts. It's regulating itself now to 12 volts. So the charger's on full tilt. <laughs> I don't like pushing them too hard, but obviously now I'm putting more than the cell rate in these batteries will take it. So I'm giving it a 2C charge. Cooling fan have just come on on the charger. So I'm gonna stop the charge rate. Check the power supply. Cold. So there it is. My portable charge station with the ISDT 150 watt charger and a balance board with four outlets on it so I can put four batteries at a time. I got the ability for 12 volts from there. I've got my 5 volts, 1 amp and 2 amp USB for there for charging and it's a case of turning it on and as you can see I've got the availability there and on the side there if I've got any um, car accessories I can plug in to there so if I've got a charger that uses uh, the old cigar plug in there it goes and everything's neat and tidy packed away under the hood there's a fan cooling fan there drawing air out but it's entering there so I've got fresh air going in there and the warm air is being extracted there so I've got a nice flow of air so all I gotta do now is use it. So that's my charger. Lots of functionality, lots of, uh, lots of benefit. But the best thing about it is portable. I can take that, chuck in the car, I got an on-site charger ready to go. In the house I got a bigger case, but it's, it's you know, this being this portable is great. And you can see the finished finished job. Looks nice, cooling fan grills there and the mains connection there nice nice finish looks the part pleased with that so i'll put some links below so that you can see where i bought some of the things from some of the components give you some ideas um this is not a how-to video this is what you can do kind of videos that's what i like to make if as i'm learning i like to pass on the knowledge Make sure your connections are good and true. No loose wires, no strands. Check your pods, negs, lives, neutrals are all in the right places and you can't go wrong. Uh, I hope you got some ideas from this video. I look forward to uh, doing the videos. So thank you again for watching Team Bull Sheep Reviews and look forward to doing my next video. If you subscribe, hit the subscribe button below, you won't miss out on my new videos. Thank you again for watching Team Woolly Sheep Reviews. Thank you. Bye.